one wants to smell. Just get in the shower. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're going to talk about grooming standards. So whatever cruise ship you go and work on, there are going to be grooming standards that you have to follow. So today I thought I would go through what they are. So this is how I would go to work. I work in the shops on board, so I've got my black blazer on. I've got my hair up in a neat ponytail, and I have my makeup done looking fresh and funky, ready for the day. Let's start with the men. You can either have a beard or be clean shaven. If you have a beard, obviously it needs to be kept tidy, clean, sharp, but you are allowed to have a beard. If you have the clean shaven look, then you will have to shave every day. Obviously this depends on the person. You might have a beard that grows back really slow, in which case you can get away with shaving every other day. But for most men I've spoken to, they have to shave every single day. You are not allowed to have a beard that is growing. You either have to have a beard or don't have a beard because if you have a beard that's kind of in between stages it can look quite unkept so I know a lot of guys who join a contract with a beard and then they shave it off halfway through their contract and then continue shaving for the rest of their contract just to mix it up a little bit when it comes to men's hair it just has to look tidy so most men that I've worked with on cruise ships have a short haircut however I have worked with some men who have long hair my friend Steve had long hair and he always had it slicked back in a bun and it always looked really neat so whatever hair you do have it just has to look clean professional and well done if you want longish hair then you've got to be prepared to style it every day so I think that's why most guys have a really short haircut so they don't they can get away with not doing anything to it if you work in the marine department as an officer or an engineer you have to have either really short hair for safety reasons or you have to have hair long enough so that it can be slicked back so you can't have like longish Ed Sheeran hair that you can't tie back it has to be really short or long enough to tie back makeup for men is just very minimal if you're in the marine department they are going to have stricter rules on makeup than if you work in the hotel department and of course it depends on the cruise line as well virgin voyages is makeup friendly anyone can wear makeup however if you go on cunard i've never worked for cunard i don't know the rules but i would imagine that they are gonna want a more subtle look so men could wear you know a bit of concealer maybe a bit of mascara but no like bright blue eyeshadow and that's for the girls as well they want subtle tasteful makeup but especially for the men now moving on to women i imagine we're going to try and keep our facial hair shaven no beards on the women i'm afraid but when it comes to hair you can have pretty much whatever hairstyle you want as long as it's not too out there so no mullets no mohawks nothing that is going to be intimidating to the passengers but you can have it long you can have it in a bob you can have it short if you have it long like i do then you have to keep it tied back most of the time but this does depend on the department you might be able to wear it loose but it can never cover your face it always has to look tidy if you are going to wear your hair loose then it has to be styled this is why i always have my hair back because it's just easier also with hair no drastic hair colors when i worked for Steiner, there was a girl that came on and she had bright pink hair and as fantastic as it was i love a good hair color it was not allowed so she had to dye it i think she dyed it blonde but you blonde brown ginger but basically a natural hair color no bright red bright blue bright green it has to look natural so if you are going to work on a cruise ship and you have green hair then i'm afraid you might have to dye it before you get on board makeup for women the same as men they like it to be subtle and tasteful I work in the makeup shop on board cruise ships so I'm allowed to go a little bit more OTT with my makeup because at the end of the day that's what I'm selling. I know that working in the spa you're allowed to wear as much makeup as you want but if you work in housekeeping or art or guest services then they're going to want you to keep it as natural as possible so they don't want you coming into work looking like you're going for a night on the town. But a bit of lipstick, a bit of eyeshadow is always welcome, as long as it is not too intense. So for everyone on board, you will have a uniform for whatever job you are doing. This uniform always has to smell good and be ironed. Depending on what department you work for, you may get one, two or three uniforms. My uniform is just black clothing, so black trousers and a black blazer. So they provide me with one, but I also have my own. So I actually take about five uniforms with me. That way I only have to do laundry like 
once a fortnight. Whereas obviously if you only have one or two uniforms, you're gonna have to be doing laundry more often. Because as we all know, there's nothing worse than a uniform that smells of BO. So you need to make sure you take pride in your uniform. Everything has to be ironed. Depending on what cruise line you work for, some of them are real sticklers for ironing. They will actually come round and even if you're in the middle of a shift, they will, you know, tell you to go and iron your uniform. I remember there was a few times that I turned up to the spa and my tunic, um, I hadn't had time to iron it and, or I hadn't made time to iron it. And I was told that I had to go and iron my tunic. And I missed out on a customer because I had to go and iron my tunic. So yes, they are real sticklers for ironing, but I have made a video actually on laundry and ironing on a cruise ship. So I'll link that down below and you can go and watch that and that will give you all the tips for saving time with the laundry and the ironing. When it comes to aftershave and perfume, obviously we want everyone to smell as nice as possible, but don't overdo it. There are some people who like to put on half a bottle before they come to work. And unfortunately it just overpowers the whole area. So be considerate of other people when you are putting on the aftershave and perfume. We all know you like it, but you know what? Other people might not like it. So a little bit goes a long way. Everyone has a name tag on board and on every ship that I have been on, you have to wear your name tag on the left side of your uniform. And you'll usually have a little cruise pin as well, but I don't have one of those at home. Also, you're going to have your key card and your crew ID that you carry around with you all the time. What I would recommend doing is getting one of these. I actually bought this off Amazon. Basically, you can pop your key card on the little plastic thing and then if you also have shop keys or spa keys you can put your keys on here and then this just clips onto your trousers and it has a retractable thing i went on virgin without taking one and i really missed it i bought three of these for like three pounds off amazon so i would really recommend getting one or three tattoos so each cruise line has different rules when it comes to tattoos but the majority of them do not like tattoos on show they'll tolerate them However, some cruise lines won't. So if you have a tattoo that is on your wrist, on your neck, behind your ear, then most likely you are gonna have to cover it up. So you might have to cover it up with foundation or with a plaster. Obviously, if you've got one on your wrist, you don't wanna cover it up with foundation because you're gonna get that foundation all over your uniform. However, if it's behind your ear, then that might be more of an option. So if you do have a tattoo in a visible area, then I would recommend buying some uh, skin colored plasters or anything that you can use to cover up the tattoo. But as I said, you are gonna have to check with your manager because some cruise lines are more tolerant than others. And the same with piercings. When I worked on P&O and Virgin, they are fine with this, but on Royal Caribbean, I was only allowed to wear one pair of studs, so I had to take this earring out. On cruise ships, there are casual nights and formal nights. So formal nights, this is when all the passengers get dressed up in their ball gowns. Depending on the department, you will probably have a formal uniform. You have your uniform to wear on casual nights and your uniform to wear on formal nights. For me, it wasn't a different uniform, but it was mandatory to wear my blazer during formal night. Whereas on a casual night, I had the option of taking my blazer off and just having a black t-shirt on. Last, but most certainly not least, showering and brushing your teeth and just hygiene in general. Every single contract I have signed, there is something in the contract that says about showering and keeping your hygiene up to standard. You actually sign something to say that you are going to shower once a day and you need to shower once or twice a day and definitely brush your teeth once or twice a day because there is nothing more awkward than having to tell someone that they smell or that their breath is bad. We all have it once or twice, but if you've got someone who constantly reeks to high heaven, it's not nice for anyone else. So showering once or twice a day is compulsory. It will say in your contract how much they expect you to shower. You will actually sign something to say that you will. The same with brushing your teeth, washing your face. And it seems silly, like you shouldn't have to sign something to say that you're going to stay clean, but you do. So that if anyone has to bring it up with you, you can't really dispute it because you have signed something to say that you will shower once or twice a day. And no one wants to smell. Just get in the shower. But that is the basic grooming standards for working on a cruise ship. I hope you have enjoyed the video and you have learned a little something. If you have, let me know in the comments and also let me know if you have any questions or any video topics that you would like me to cover. Be sure to press the notification button because in the next video I'm going to be talking about why we have to be open-minded to be happy working on cruise ships and you are not going to want to miss it. But while you wait for that video, you can check out these two videos 
here. But thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.